Oh my god, anime is so weird. Shut up, Brittany. We get it. You think you're trendy with your pink hair. You think you look good? Hmm? I got a little newsflash for you. You do. It looks so hot. Oh, well, thank you. It's my natural hair. Anime might be weird, but are we really gonna act like our whole generation didn't grow up watching four sewer turtles fight crime? Okay, well, that's not as weird as anime. <laughs> oh, really? Well, after they finished fighting the crime, they would then dip back to their sewer homes for some celebratory za with their literal rap father. Okay, that's a little weird, but not as weird as anime. Ah! As you can see, I have a new video style. I hope you guys enjoy it. I came into a little bit of money. Ah, but well, well, not yet, not yet, not yet. Chill, chill, chill. I think you guys know a fair bit about my personality, but you guys don't know a lot about my childhood and the things that I like and the things that I do in my free time. One interest that you don't know that I have is anime. I am a massive anime fan. Like many others, I was introduced to anime with a little show called, and I don't know if you've heard of it, Dragon Ball Z. I remember the first time it ever came on my 19 inch box television, cause I was in fifth grade and it was 2002 and that was the best you got. It was summer break, the window was open, a nice breeze was cascading over my nude body. I don't know why I was naked, but I was not. I'm lying. <laughs> the sun was midway through its descent in the sky, and Cell was guzzling up Android 17 like my parents were guzzling mixed drinks on the back patio. I don't know what it was about Dragon Ball Z that had me so intrigued. I was a basketball fan at the time, and I was a fan of the New Jersey Nets. They were making a serious playoff run that year, and for some reason, I kept switching from that back over to this yellow glowing dude who would just continually shout. Why was he shouting so much? Soon after, something magical happened. I'm up late on a Saturday night, and this came across my television. All kids out of the pool for Adult Swim. All kids out! What made Adult Swim so special is that it was cool to be there. It had an experience that protruded out from just watching the shows. From the tech screens to the bumpers, it was a whole package. When you thought Cartoon Network in 2002, you thought of shows like Powerpuff Girls, Ed, Ed and Eddie, Johnny Bravo, and if we're gonna get a little edgy, Samurai Jack. During the day, Cartoon Network was filled with these kinds of shows. But if you stayed up late, way later than kids are supposed to stay up, they started airing cartoons specifically aimed at adults. Let me tell you, I watched half of these shows, not because I liked them, but because I wasn't supposed to be watching them. Things just feel so much better when you're not supposed to be doing them. Like throwing back natty lights with your friends on the weekends and pretending like Zeus himself pissed his godhood into that can. When in reality, it tasted like a homeless man pissed his homelessness into the can. Oh, speaking of homeless people, hey, homeless guy who robbed me, I want my shoe back. If you're the guy, you'll know what I'm talking about. I want it back. The American cartoons that aired on Adult Swim were always comedic in nature. That's why if you wanted anything substantial, something that was story driven, you watch the animes. There are plenty of really high quality, some would say legendary anime that aired on Adult Swim. But the anime that comes to my mind whenever I hear Adult Swim, is a little anime called Wolf's Reign, which is about wolves who are able to disguise themselves as humans after being hunted to near extinction. And they're the only ones that can find paradise in a post-apocalyptic world. And I know that sounds batshit crazy, and it is, but that's why I loved it. So few shows were that creative. One of the greatest shows of all time also happened to air in the early 2000s, a little show with two letters called the OC, bitch. I said, oh, b -b -b bitch. A handsome teenager from the wrong side of town comes to live with a rich Jewish family, making for some of the greatest television moments in history. Mm, what you say? I say that the OC's a banger. I should just sum. For as iconic as this show was, it had very limited creativity. It's the story as old as time. New guy comes to town, falls for a girl with a boyfriend. Guy punches Boy, boyfriend in the face. God. Guy steals girl. Guy breaks up with girl, and then guy gets back with girl. And then girl is killed off due to a contract dispute, 
and then traumatized guy joins a fight club to take out his pain on other people. So the story is all this time. I've seen it a million times already. It was very formulaic, and that's why anime was so special to me, because it was a visual style that I really enjoyed, alongside three-dimensional characters, pun, who I grew attached to, because they were complex. In all the animated shows, I'm thinking like the cartoons, Batman Beyond, Justice League, they never challenged me because the premise was always the same. Bad guy does bad thing. Good guys swoop in, beat bad guys. And there was never any questioning of motives, morals, really ever. Don't get me wrong, those shows were super fun to watch. But if I wanted something substantial, something that I could really invest myself into, I needed to watch something a little bit more adult, and that's what the anime were to me. The reason I started this video talking about Adult Swim is because that's where it started for many of us. Back then, the internet wasn't really a big thing. And in fact, if your mom was on the phone, you couldn't use the internet. You had dial-up. It was either she's on the landline phone or you're on the internet. And guess what? Your mom was always on the phone. Mom, Kathy is three houses down. Why are you on the phone for an hour and a half? Just go over there. Well, now you're buying Girl Scout cookies? They come to you. Why are you calling in for Girl Scout cookies? But nowadays, anime is so widely available and it's become cool to have that as an interest. Similar to how it was like kind of a nerdier interest to be into superheroes, now it's a cool thing. Anime is also experiencing that same thing. Teenagers now, they can walk around wearing anime on their shirt like this. What is on that shirt? Girls, looks like they're physically exerting themselves. Oh, it's girls after a workout. That's why they're so sweaty. That is a lot of sweat though. When I was a kid, I had to hide that shit because anime wasn't like a widely accepted thing back then. Like imagine if this came out in 2002 and you had to explain this. Oh god, mom, do you knock? No, 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 it's not porn. It's not, it's a cooking show. It's this guy, he's trying to become the best chef in the world. It's a cooking show. It's not porn. Don't, I don't even act like I don't know what's going on across the hallway. We have thin walls. Okay? I know that my father is not your daddy, okay? So you go that way, I'll go this way, and we'll just leave each other alone! And it was worse than that because anime wasn't readily available online back in 2002. You could only watch it really on Adult Swim. Then along came this little thing called the Inner Networks. Anime is easier than ever to access, and I'm so jealous of the kids nowadays who take an interest in anime because it's just readily available. We've talked about anime in this video, but now I want to talk about Anna Yu. <sighs> I thought of that in the shower this morning. I hope you like it. Nowadays, you can hop on Crunchyroll and binge watch almost any anime. Crunchyroll, if you haven't guessed it, is the sponsor of today's video. Thanks, Crunchyroll. They have an endless amount of anime and manga. And what's really cool is that they simulcast, meaning that there are certain animes that once they air in Japan, one hour later, they are on Crunchyroll ready for you to watch. They're doing that with My Hero Academia right now. I'm all caught up on that waiting for the next episode. And I'm so happy that I signed up because I found anime that I watched years ago and completely forgot about. Like I enjoyed them, it was a good ride, and then I just forgot them completely. Now I can go back and watch them. I'm thinking about Blue Spring Ride and Ore Monogatari. Those two animes, I remember, like, moved me. There's a lot of talk about action anime in this video, but I have an ooey-gooey center. I'm a soft boy. Anytime I watch a good love story, I just melt. Oh! So I am super happy to be partnering with Crunchyroll, and if you go to crunchyroll.com slash Dylan is in trouble, you will get two weeks of that sweet, premium, no ads, good looking, high quality anime for absolutely free. I myself am a paying member. First, I just hate ads. But it's also nice to give back to the anime community uh, who's, who've given so much to me. So go to crunchyroll.com slash Dylan is in trouble. Two weeks free. I'll leave a link in the description. Let's get back to the anime, okay? What I loved so much about anime is that it could be anything. It could be action packed. It could be over the top funny. Or it could be steadily funny. It could break your heart into a thousand pieces. Or it could just disturb you like no other thing has ever disturbed you. What's the most disturbing show that you remember as a kid? Courage the Cowardly Dog, maybe? Is this a little bit creepy? Yeah, maybe. How about growing emotionally attached to this little girl and this cute little puppy? Dog. 
It's not a puppy, it's a grown thing. Over the course of two episodes, you just grow to love them. And then this sick psycho father fuses the dog and the girl together into this creepy abomination hybrid. And who decided to let this thing talk? Edward, ah, my friend. No, stop, stop. That voice has haunted me for 15 years. Speaking of disturbing, let's move on to a little section I like to call Death Note. Live action American version. I'm five minutes in and I want someone to use a Death Note on me to end my misery. In my research for this video, I came across the live action American Death Note adaptation and I avoided it when it first came out because the trailer was so bad. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Death Note, it's a very basic premise. There's a book where if you write the name of the person and have their face in your mind, that person dies. So Death Note at its heart is a story about a genius student who finds the Death Note and starts using it and a genius detective and they're trying to uncover each other. Whoever is the first to find the other is going to win and the loser is gonna die. It's just this genius cat and mouse game. It's one of the best anime out there. And what made the original Death Note so great is that Light is a perfect student. He's popular, he's good looking, he's a genius, so he's well regarded by adults. And from the outside, he's an upstanding citizen. He is not the person that you would expect to be the killer. Now look at this guy. He is the first person that I would guess is the killer. Mister, I haven't slept in three days and have bags under my eyes, and I use Axe body spray to hide the fact that I haven't showered in a week. It's fine, I used the whole can. You don't need to be the world's greatest detective to figure out that this guy did it. He has tons of motive, and he straight up just looks like he would do it. And I know we're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but this is a movie, not a book. The show never tried to make you like Light, the main character, the killer. More people, in fact, like L, the detective trying to uncover the killer. The movie does the exact opposite. Oh, looky here, our poor protagonist is being bullied and nobody cares. Also, his mom died. Mm, he's having a really tough time. Have you ever had a tough time? Maybe you can relate to our main character and like our movie, perhaps? Let me throw out a hypothetical at you. Try to catch it, okay? Ready? You dropped it. It was fragile. God damn it. Let's say that you had a weapon that you used to take care of people, right? For this example, we'll use, uh, what's a weapon that people used to kill? Nunchucks. So you got these chucks, which are super sick by the way, and these chucks are just covered in the blood of your victims. It's also the only piece of evidence that ties you to the murders. What do you think you would do with these chucks? Do you think that you would hide them or do you think that you would show them off to the hot emo girl at your school so that she would bang you? Because we all know that bitches love chucks. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Wanna have sex with me now? This is the scene that sucked me into the show. See, Light knows that he cannot be caught with the Death Notes. The Death Note is the only thing that directly implicates him to the murders. So he hides the Death Note under a false bottom in his locked desk drawer. But he also leaves the key inside the lock and puts a diary on top of the false bottom. By leaving the key in the lock, it doesn't look like he's going out of his way to try to hide something. And if someone does snoop, they'll find the diary and they'll think that that's what he's trying to hide. That's why it's in the locked drawer. However, if someone had the suspicion that he was hiding a death note and they searched the drawer, if they forcibly removed the false bottom, he had a contraption set where a fire would start and burn the death notes. The only way to safely access the death note is to put a pen, ink cartridge, up through the bottom to stop the fire from starting. Only he would know that, so no one is ever going to find the death note. That shows me that the writer just put so much care into crafting this story. In the movie, when Light first gets the notebook, he doesn't go through all that. What does he do? Death note? What is it? Uh, I can't tell you. Do you really wanna know? Sure. Okay, then I'll tell you. Oh my God, I don't wanna see you two making out. This is not what this movie's about. I hope one of you gets mono. Oh, what happened to here? Didn't I tell you? You shouldn't have been kissing her. Now you have mono, you little kissy kissy boy. Oh, you little kissy. I want to kiss the hot emo girl. I'm looking over the doctor notes now, Light. It also says here that you have genital warts. I hope it was all worth it for that killer pussy. 
to get it because she's a literal killer. She killed people with the Death Note as well. Okay. You ripped out the heart of the show and you gave us just like the shell of it. You took all those compelling elements and threw them out the window. Also that you could just add a love story and turn Light into a horny teenager. You cucked him. That's what you did. I'm just covering the surface level of the Death Note American movie cringe. But since we're here, let's just talk about the cringy parts of anime. We gotta do it. Japanese people must be super horny. I don't know what's in the water over there, but I can't watch a show without multiple shots like this. I don't wanna see this. What is this now? Dog, why is he shooting all over her boobs? I should have phrased that better. Then again, it is hard to judge Japanese people for being attracted to cartoons when my first crush was a bunny from Space Jam. American television is way more sexual than Japanese television, so I'm gonna give that a pass. What I will not give a pass to is sexualizing siblings, and specifically younger siblings. Why is that a thing? There's a whole show where that is the central premise. It's called My Little Sister Can't Be This Cute. At least with like Game of Thrones, the incestual parts are looked down upon. This is my best visual representation of anime. Hello anime consumer, I have something cool for you. Oh, thanks anime creator. Yeah, toss that over here. Here you go. Ah, oh, sweet. I can't wait to watch this. If you like that, you're gonna love this. Um... I don't think I want that. Oh, really? I thought you'd love this. Well, I'm gonna throw it in anyways, and then maybe you'll come to love it. I don't think I will, but you know what? I can ignore it, I guess. That's that's what I'll do. Perfect. There you go. Okay. Ooh, hoo, 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 another good one. I'm gonna toss this over, okay? Oh, yes. Thank you. Wow, this is so cool. Uh, what do you got there? Haha! <laughs> I know you like this one. You can't even deny no. it. No. No, really, really no. Don't want it. Do not give that to me. Throw that away. Oh, really? You you don't... Hmm. Oh, yeah, I gotta break it to you. We're gonna have to put this in. Why? I, it doesn't seem like it's gonna have any value to anybody. I think people are gonna like this. Whoop. Ah. Why'd you throw it like that? Hmm, I don't know about this one. Should we throw this away? Thro no! That's the best one so far. You th throw that over here. Hmm. All right. Ah, oh, yes, sweet. What do you got there? No, 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 I do not, no, 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 no. I'm a part of the anime community and I will acknowledge that we have some weeb shit over here, okay? For example, characters on pillows, that is horrifying. But I don't want that stuff to overshadow the brilliance of anime. And the beautiful thing is that there is something for everybody. Do you want to be moved to tears? Anohana. The flower we saw that day. I cried like a baby. A little bitch baby. You want a sprawling space bounty hunter story? Cowboy Bebop. If you're into zombies and watching a protagonist protect a little girl in place of the one that he lost, that's actually not anime. That's a video game. It's called The Last of Us. Super good, by the way. But you want an epic fantasy where humans whiz around on these steampunk looking devices, slaying 30 foot tall humanoid creatures? That's Attack on Titan. Maybe you don't want a big action story. Maybe you want something a little bit more chill. I'll tell you the most chilled anime of all time. It's called Tanaka-kun is always listless. It's about a character who just wants to sleep all day. That's the whole anime. <laughs> the struggles of a person who just wants to sleep and wants to just live a relaxing life with no responsibilities. That's the show. It is the equivalent of cotton candy. Just sugary sweet, but ultimately no substance. But you're glad you ate it, because it tasted amazing. I'm telling you, if you are ever in a dark spot, just binge watch. Tanaka-kun is always listless in like a light room, in a room with sunlight. You will feel a hundred times better. Oh, do me, do me. Are there any anime for me? Maybe an anime about statues? Just a group of statues hanging out in the modern day. Maybe they make music, maybe they don't. I don't know. Oh, sorry, Julius. I think that's a little too specific. I'm just kidding. Seco Boys 
four statues who become a singing group, the One Direction of statues. Let me answer the two questions that you have. One, yes, this is very real. And two, no, I don't know why. Let's end this with my very favorite thing in anime. And that is the fights. Ooh, the fights. Whether you like or dislike animation, there is one thing that you cannot deny. And that is that there are certain things that you can pull off in animation that you cannot pull off in live action. Just look how crisp this is. The lighting, the color, the camera movement. Ah! To pull this off in live action, it would cost... Uh, let me do the calculations here. 18.7 gazillion dollars. This upcoming anime season is going to be a very bittersweet anime season for me because two of the shows that I've watched for years and have had a huge impact on me are at both ending, and that's Attack on Titan and another anime called Origairu. I refuse to call it My Teen Romantic Comedy Snafu, which is apparently the translated title. I don't believe it. It's sad when an anime ends because those characters and those faces live only in that world. And you can't really say the same of live action because undoubtedly any actor that's playing a role, he's gonna infuse some of himself into the character. Even the best actors, they bring their own experiences and their own cadences to that character. And you're gonna see traces of that in other movies with the same actor. It's not really quite the same with voice actors. It's, you see that face and that character, it is uniquely tied to that world and that is it. And I think that's why it's, it's so compelling because that person, that face, is forever connected to that world and that world alone. It kind of like isolates that story from the outside worlds. Whereas if you're watching a movie and you see Brad Pitt playing a character, you're in your mind, you're like, okay, that's Brad Pitt, I'm watching a movie. With animation, I believe that there's more of a disassociation with the outside world, which helps you immerse yourself into that world a little bit deeper. Luckily for myself, despite the fact that some of my favorite animes are ending, this last year of anime has been the best I've ever seen. I think the fact that it's growing more global is bringing more eyes and more revenue to it, which just helps make better quality work. And I'm so excited to see what the future of anime holds. If you want to see what the future of anime holds, head to Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll.com slash Dylan is in trouble. Two weeks premium free. No ads. Ads are dumb. Except when they're on my videos. Then they're pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you as always for the support. And since this is my new outro, I guess, I'll see you later.